Good morning everyone, how are you doing? It's Paul here from St Peter's Churchyard in Langley. From Unusual Things, you know by now, don't you? It's, uh, what time is it? Quarter past six. It's a September morning. Left Portsmouth about 4.15. So a couple of hours drive. Luckily the churchyard gate was open. <laughs> Always a welcoming place. Uh, yeah, and today we are here to see the um, final resting place and the grave of Norris McWhirter. Now, do you remember him? I'll tell you a bit more about him in a minute, but he was the guy that created, him and his twin brother, created the record breakers. You know, the TV show and the book, of course, that he's come along. Um, I think it still comes out every year now, doesn't it? The annual record breakers, Guinness Book of Records. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about him. Don't forget, if you like today's video, give it one of those. Subscribe, all the usual stuff. Don't need me to tell you any more than that. And thank you, as always, to people that donate towards the channel. Subscribe and watch the videos. Um, I really appreciate it. And it helps me to obviously travel and do these sort of videos, um, which is great. And I love doing it. And uh, as long as you guys keep watching and you're happy with it, I'll carry on. Simple as that, really, isn't it? Right, let's crack on with it, shall we? Norris Dewar McWhirter, CBE, 12th of August 1925 to the 19th of April 2004, was a British writer, political activist, co-founder of the Freedom Association and a television presenter. He and his twin brother Ross were known internationally for founding the Guinness World Records, also known as the Guinness Book of Records. Norris and Ross were the twin sons of William McWhirter, the editor of the Sunday Victorial and Margaret Williamson. McWhirter was an excellent athlete. He recorded a time of 10.7 seconds for the 100 metres whilst a student and later represented Scotland. He and his brother became sports journalists in 1950. In 1951, they published Get To Your Marks and that year they had founded an agency to provide facts and figures to Fleet Street selling out in Norris McWhirter's words to supply facts and figures to newspapers, yearbooks, encyclopedias and advertisers. At the same time, he became a founding member of the Association for Track and Field Statisticians. McWhirter came to the public attention whilst working on the BBC as a sports commentator on 6 of May 1954. He kept the time when Roger Bannister ran the first sub four minute mile after the race he began his announcement. He was an active member of the Conservative Party in the 1960s and fought unsuccessfully to recapture Orpington in the 1964 and 1966 UK general elections after its loss to the Liberals in 1962 by-election. His brother Ross was a critic of British government policy in Northern Ireland and called for a tougher response by the army against Irish Republicans. Ross was shot dead by the Provisional IRA in 1975 at his home in Middlesex after offering a reward for information leading to the apprehension of those carrying out a bombing campaign in London at the time. Following Ross's murder, Norris co-founded the right-wing political organisation, the National, uh, National Association for Freedom, now the Freedom Association in 1975. Both brothers were regulars on BBC show Record Breakers. They were noted for their exceptional memory, enabling them to provide detailed answers to any questions from the audience about entries into the Guinness Book of Records. After Ross's death, Norris continued to appear on the show eventually making him one of the most recognisable people on children's television in the 1970s and 1980s. McWhirter was appointed commander of the Order of the British Empire in the 1980 New Year's Honours. In 1957, McWhirter married Carol Eckert, who died in 1987. They had a son and a daughter. In 1990, he married his secretary, Tessa von Werkart. He retired from the Guinness Book of Records in 1985, Though he continued in an advisory role in 1996, he continued to write, editing a new reference book, Norris McWhirter's Book of Millennium Records, in 1999. McWhirter died from a heart attack at his home, Kington Langley, Wiltshire, on the 19th of April 2004, aged 78. His memorial service was attended by Baroness Thatcher, John Gorick, Jeremy Beadle and Christopher Gill. There's all the information there on Norris McWhirter. Now this is um, it's a lovely little churchyard actually. Quite a quite peaceful one. I'll say that. I don't know whether they're private grounds next door. But I heard a rattling around. <laughs> Didn't make me jump. But 
I looked over and I think there's a fox just running around. So I just need to go in search of it for a bit now. Right, um, I've been on a bit of a wild goose chase with this one. I've been all around this churchyard. I've even driven to another churchyard nearby to double check, you know, because sometimes that happens. You go to one churchyard and the other person, you know, the person's buried in another one or interred in the other one. It happens, okay, there's nothing we can do about that. So I've had a good look around this one. I've had a good look around the other one and I don't, I think today we are going to find Norris McWhirter's grave. Now, I am led to believe he was buried, but I'm just looking around because you never know. Somewhere it did say his ashes are interred. So I'm just having a little look here where they've got the little headstones where people may have been interred. But from what I'm led to believe with an original research that I've done is that he was buried here. So it's always worth having a good look around. But like I say, I've been to the other churchyard. I've been to this one. I've been walking around here, but as you guys know, I first came on. Um, it's now seven o'clock. I think I first came in here. 615 or something like that so I've had a good look round but I really don't think today is going to be a lucky day for us but we know this happens don't we you know we've we've done it before where we've been to places and you know you're, you're led to believe that their headstone or their ashes are interred there and there's a memorial plaque but sometimes it it doesn't pan out that way, you know. You, you, I do as much research as I can. Obviously, it's a long way that I drive, so um, I don't want to just turn up here willy-nilly just on a hunch. I always do as much as I can, but sometimes, you know, um, the information isn't always correct or it isn't um, as you expect it to be, like I say, and hence why I've driven to another churchyard which is nearby, because I'm aware of where Norris... Um, grew up you know where we lived um so uh yeah i don't think we're gonna have any luck today i'll carry on having another little look but if i don't find anything it's just one of those things we can put down to um it happens but anyway we've got to see a nice churchyard i think which is a good thing hope you're not too disappointed um this happens Let's hope it happens few and far between. Touch wood, it's only happened once, I think, so far. Anyway, I will see you all on the next one. Take it easy.